Okay, we're going to start our lecture for this semester with ecology. And the first thing we're going to look at is Chapter 44, Population Ecology. So let's define some vocab terms. First of all, what is ecology? It's the study of interactions of organisms with the other organisms that live where they live and all of the organisms interacting with their physical environment. When we talk about habitat, we're talking about their address where they live. And then we have the levels of organization that we need to look at um, here that are all defined. Um, the organism, it is a member of a species, which is a group of individuals that can uh, interbreed and produce fertile offspring. All the members of a species make a population, all the members that live in an area. And then a community is all the different populations that live in an area. An ecosystem is the community interacting with the external environment. And then a biosphere, that's the part of Earth that supports life. So our levels of organization go from the organism, which is part of a species, that makes up the population, makes up the community, makes up the ecosystem, which is part of the biosphere. Now, we also need to define what is demography. It's a statistical study of a population, and this is going to include population density, population distribution, as well as growth rate of a population. Now, when we look at population density, we're looking at the number of individuals per unit area, but this can be mis misleading because it gives the impression that they are evenly distributed. We know that there are not 86.8 persons living per square mile in the United States. We know there are some areas where you have more than 86.8 and some areas where you have less. But if you look at population density, it gives the impression that they are evenly distributed. Population distribution is the pattern of dispersal of the individuals across an area of interest. And of course, the availability of resources is going to influence where members of the population live. That can be your limiting factors. These are the things that determine where it lives, the resources. Uh, for instance, trout. They live in cool mountain streams because there's a high oxygen content. But carp don't need that high oxygen content, so they're going to live in rivers near the coast. So the oxygen content of the water is the limiting factor there. Now, how do populations grow? The rate of natural increase or growth rate depends on the number of individuals born each year and the number of individuals that die each year. Now, this is assuming that immigration, people moving in, and immigration, people moving out, that's immigration with an E, are equal. And we all know that populations grow if the number born exceeds the number that die. Another vocab term, biotic potential. This is the highest rate of natural increase for a population that can occur if your resources are unlimited. It's going to depend on factors that influence the population's reproduction, including how many offspring do they usually have? What's the chance that those offspring will survive to, until reproductive age? How often do they reproduce? And at what age do they begin reproduction? This is all going to be influenced by how much competition is within that population and if there is any disease or predators. All of that's going to influence if the population grows. If we look at this picture here, these two pictures, and at biotic potential, you've got the rhinoceros on the left that has one baby, and then you've got the sow that has a big litter. Now, which one has more biotic potential? The sow has got a bigger litter, more chance of survival, more chance of them, the offspring reaching 
reproductive age. And when they reproduce, they're going to have a bigger litter than the rhinoceros has. Now, if we look at mortality patterns, the vocab we need to see here is cohort. This is all the members of a population born at the same time. And we have to look also at survivorship. What's the probability that those members in that cohort are going to survive to a particular age? And we're going to see this by looking at survivorship curves, which is a plot of the number of organisms surviving at each age. And we have here in figure A, a um, it shows all B, C, and D, okay? So B is the bluegrass, that's the magenta one. And you see that they're going to survive a long time and death is going to start occurring after midpoint, after 50. But if you look at figure C down at the left on the bottom, the lizard, death can happen anytime. It's just the population just decreases over time. But if we look at the mosquitoes, down in figure D, the blue one, you see death starts happening very early in their life. So their chances of surviving, you know, a long time are not good. We also look at age distribution. This is the part of the population that falls into different age categories, and we break it into three groups, re pre-reproductive, reproductive, and post-reproductive. And there are three age structure diagrams that are possible, an increasing, a stable, and a decreasing. And this is showing the different diagrams. Increasing is the first one on the left. You see there are more at pre-reproductive age. Stable, you got pretty much the same number at pre-reproductive and reproductive. But in a decreasing population, you've got fewer pre-reproductive and more. It increases slightly at reproductive and post-reproductive before decreasing again. 